David Wygant, davidwygant.com, 10-minute daily reality check. Today we're going to talk about a touchy subject. A touchy subject for some of you, because some of you truly spend your lives doing this extremely annoying habit. It's the one thing to do this habit to yourself. It's another thing when you do this habit in front of your kids so you can teach them that it's okay to do this habit. It's another thing to do this habit to friends because your friends will no longer respect you. It's another thing to do this habit at work or to just random people. It's probably one of the worst habits human beings do. Yet on a daily basis, a high percentage of people will actually conduct this habit. The funny thing is, I always wonder if they even know, or how can they keep track of this habit? Before I tell you about this, I'm going to share something with you. I haven't watched a second of the Olympics. I don't care. I could care less about the tobogganing, the skiing, the skating, the wannabe Tanya Hardings and Nancy Kerrigan's. Have you seen that movie, I, Tanya? Fabulous. Great movie. I don't do the Olympics at all. Could care less about Sean White and his magical snow mo- snowboard. I didn't even know what it was. I was going to call it a snowmobile board. I give up sports the second the NFL closes, and I basically read only football articles, and I can care less about baseball, basketball, tennis, or anything in between. I prefer to be actively participating in my life than passively sitting on my ass watching other people be active participants in their life. I find that more exciting. Now, I'm not going to go out there and conduct my own Olympics. I'm certainly not going to toboggan down a mountain. I'm certainly not going to skate. Me on skates is one of the scariest things in the entire world. I am still at my age a holder of the rails. My daughter will laugh at me when we do that. She'll look at me and say, Dad, come skating. And I'm like, no, no, I don't want to skate. Because if I skate, I'm going to land on my ass on this hard ice. And I most likely will shatter my phone that's in my back pocket. And that's a mean thing to do to one of the loves of my life, my iPhone. So today, let's talk about if you fall into that category of that type of person. The person that is, well... Part Pinocchio and, well, part Pinocchio. We're talking about liars. We're talking about people that conduct their lives every single day living lies. I'm going to tell you the story about a guy named Russ. Russ was a business partner of mine years ago, back in the early 90s. Russ and I bought foreclosed homes in Denver, and we had this big board in the office. We had a reasonably cheap office in a strip mall in Denver, and there was this big board, and I remember we used to put the properties that we acquired via quitclaim deeds on there. We had a certain amount of time to sell the property, rehab the property. We were using the system to make the money. When Russ hired me or told me to become his partner, he had all these properties on the board, and I thought to myself, wow. With the properties he has and the properties I have, we're going to make a lot of money. Russ said he lived in this place in Denver, in this house that we owned. Russ and I would go out. We would drink. He was always on some type of painkiller and would smoke a lot of weed. He had a Mitsubishi Talon, a green one. I remember he would get really drunk. And I would look at him and say, let me drive you home. And he would always say no. I never saw the house that we owned that he lived in because we didn't own that house. He didn't live in that house. And that's the reason why he had to keep track of the lies. Even when drunk, he was able to keep track of his lies because if I drove him home, I would be driving him to a shitty apartment that he lived in North Denver. He was an extensive liar. All the properties that are on the board were not properties that we own. They were just properties that were up there. Because I eventually ran a title search and found out that none of those properties existed. The girls in the office helped me out. They were all ready to quit. And then I went in the next morning and the door was locked and I couldn't get in. Apparently the keys and the locks were changed. 
He was able to spin a new tale of lies so all the girls believed whatever lies he told. There are professional liars, there are white liars, there are other types of liars. But any liar is a liar, no matter how you slice it. If you tell a little white lie, you're basically doing what? Conducting a life that's not authentic. And we all do it. We blame it on the traffic when we're late, when in reality there was no traffic when we were late because we actually left late. Well, we just lollygagged. We checked out the internet. There was an eBay auction going on. Maybe there was something on West Elm that we needed to check out. Maybe a friend called. Maybe we got into a text conversation with somebody because those are always so scintillating and so amazing that we just can't put them down. Maybe the dog needed to be put out or maybe just plain old simple. We just spaced out and just decided to be late because we didn't respect the person that we were meeting. So when we got there, we blamed it on traffic because that's always a great thing to do. Let's blame it on traffic, especially when you live in Los Angeles. You can blame it on traffic every single day. That's a little white lie. There are other lies that we do, the lies that we tell our partners, the lies that we tell our lovers, the ones that, well, we supposedly have conducted a vow of, of love for somebody, whether it's through marriage or living with them or commitment, there are people who cheat and they lie. They're doing a double lie. They're doing the double lie. The double lie is they're on an online dating site. They're on Tinder. They're on Bumble. They're doing something 50 miles away. That's why you have to beware of the people that are hitting you up from 50 miles away because most likely they are sleeping in bed with somebody else and they're looking for somebody that they can fuck outside the realm of their partner's, well, geographical network. So you always got to be aware of those people because if truly they were single, they would be dating people that were close to their house unless they live in some rural area. But even then they would still go close as they can possibly be because there's an abundance of people no matter where you live that are single and looking to meet. So there's that liar. I call them the double liar, the double edge liar, whatever you want to call whatever term. They're lying to their spouse and they're lying to the person that they're screwing. They tell the person that they're screwing eventually finds out that they're married and they say that they're going to leave their wife or their husband when in turn they really aren't. They're lying to themselves and what they're doing is they're most likely lying on other levels too. You just don't lie on one level. There's just degrees of lying. They're showing their children that lying is perfectly okay. They're concocting stories that fit them. Do you know anybody that broke up or had a relationship that went away? Their version is entirely the opposite of the other person's version. Who do you believe in that situation? There's always two sides to a story, but a story at least has to recognize each other in the transition stage when it becomes a story. So if one person is spinning a story that is the complete opposite of the other person, who do you think is truly lying? Who do you think is making shit up? Obviously, the person who's got the far-fetched version, the version that is entirely different. And that version is the version that they're selling to their friends. Most of their friends are pretty much on to them if they've been around them long enough. But the story that they're telling, they're telling their kids. And the kids are actually starting to learn the beautiful gift of lying. Because where do you think lying comes down to? It's generation. It's passed on. It's in your genes. It's actually in your DNA. It's in your programming. Dear old mom or dear old dad lied through their life. So you learned that it was either A, okay to do it, or B, you decided not to do it, depending on how conscious you became and what age you started realizing that your parents were actually completely not what you thought they were. The most dread dramatic, devastating thing that a lot of kids go through. When your mom, the mom that you idolize or the dad that you idolize is really not the person you idolized. They're no longer a hero. They become a human being. And once you see them as a human being, you realize how flawed they are. And once you realize that they've lied throughout your entire life, you start to realize that there are two choices. One, you can be like them if you still idolize them. Or two, you can realize that that is not the way to conduct your life. People lie to banks. People lie on their credit cards. People lie when they declare bankruptcy. People lie on everything. People lie to try to hustle money from other people. People borrow money from people knowing that they're never going to pay them back. People conduct stories of being a victim so they're able to get money from somebody knowing that they don't deserve it at all. People live lies. They stack one lie on top of the next lie. And the problem is, and this is where the reality becomes in. When you lie, you need to do what? You need to remember all these different angles to every story that you have ever told in your entire life. Lying is fucking exhausting. Living the truth is far easier. 
in concept. Admitting that you're a scumbag is pretty hard for a lot of people, so they'd rather be a liar. Admitting that their version of the story is 100% concocted to benefit them in every way, shape, and form is hard for somebody to admit. But we're role models to everybody. Parents who lie are the worst form of liars because they're teaching their kids it's okay to lie, and they're living a lie, so they're not truly living in authenticity. So what do we do in this situation? Well, if you're lying, you admit it. Get clean. Go to rehab. Go to LA. Liars Anonymous. There's a 12-step program. Look it up. And I'm making it up, actually, because there is no Liars Anonymous, but yet there should be. There's no magic potion pill that we can take for lying. We just need to come clear We need to eliminate the lies. We need to apologize for the people that we harmed in our life. And we need to step up because people will highly respect you because they've been knowing for a long time that you are a liar. You need to teach your children that lying is not right. And most importantly, you need to realize that living an authentic, powerful, real life is actually far better because you don't need to remember all the different angles to all the different stories to all the bullshit you've been selling people. Because a liar is actually a bullshit salesman. And that is how we end the reality check. Pass it on. And I will see you tomorrow.